Raising money can be a challenge for nonprofits working hard to make a difference in the lives of so many. That's where Citizens Bank of Connecticut steps in with its Champions in Action program. I was in Old Lyme earlier this week where the latest deserving group received the distinction of being the first champion of 2012. Hi, everybody. I'm here with the president of Citizens Bank, Ned Handy, and his aides, Mary Lee Weber, who are about to make the first check presentation for Champion in Action in 2012. This is an exciting time. Everybody inside the room, they don't know what's going on. This is a surprise for everybody, and you're going to find out in just a few minutes. Are you ready? We're ready. All right, let's go. Ready to roll? Ready to roll. Go ahead. Hi, folks. We have um, a little special something. Hello, everybody. <laughs> You all look like you're working very hard. How are you all? I'm Ned Handy and I'm the president of Citizens Bank in Connecticut and I'm here with my good friend Mary Lee Weber from News 8, friend and partner. Um, and uh, this is a really exciting day for us. Um, we are rolling into our 10th anniversary of a program we call Champions in Action. Um, and I can't think of a better way to do it than to announce our first champion in 2012 in the category of youth initiatives and that is you high hopes therapeutic riding so congratulations you get this check for thirty five thousand dollars for those of us who do not know what High Hopes is about, tell us more. We are a 38-year-old organization, a nonprofit dedicated to providing the equine-assisted activities and therapies to children and adults with all kinds of disabilities, physical, cognitive, emotional, psychosocial. Um, we work with school groups, we work with veterans, we work with adults who've had a traumatic brain injury. We work, 21% of our participants are children with autism. Um, we have physical therapists, occupational therapists, certified and trained staff, uh, 650 volunteers, uh, 36,000 volunteer hours last year, So it's, uh, and 26 hard-working horses that are constantly working with each and every one of our participants to ensure that they are experiencing a positive social educational activity that might affect balance and posture, it might help with language, expressive language, receptive language. Um, a lot of the kids in our school groups are working on academic or educational goals. We are all so thrilled. It's just a, an incredible honor for everyone here at High Hopes. What are you going to do with the money? Well, we are going to predominantly utilize this for our scholarship funds. We subsidize two-thirds of every single participant and then additionally 50% of those folks require additional help to be able to ride. So that's exactly where it's going to go. <laughs> How did you choose High Hopes? Just for what they do for so many kids, 1,200 kids a year, 8,700 times that they're out there with, with the horses getting, learning to be independent, learning to overcome some of the barriers. You know, they face so many barriers that to be able to overcome one, and I, for one, am so afraid of horses that I'm, I'm amazed at what they get these kids doing. And so it's, it's an easy one, and, and, and uh, you know, it, it helps us to, to remind ourselves that we, we belong in the community, and, we, and it's our job to support the community. And, and this is like number... This. 38. Number 38. 38 champions over the course of the last 10 years, and you know that because you've been there with us the whole way. Nonprofits all across Connecticut. Right, right, in various areas. This one in youth initiatives. If uh, High Hopes was not here, what would happen to these children? Uh, some of them would fall through cracks. Some of them wouldn't have this opportunity. For some of our participants, their time, their, their one hour a week where they're here on the horse and in this environment of what we what they're often telling us is most um, unconditional accepting environment their life would be less bright I think they would not maybe have that relationship with the horse and the volunteer team they wouldn't have that piece to look forward to when they wake up in the morning some of our kids I, I taught a little preschooler last uh, fall and he had some language issues and um, his mom called me or sent an email after the first week and said he's calling his bike by his horse's name so it clearly had an impact he was trying willing to try something new you know it's a growth opportunity for every single person that's here and we also train um, we're an international training site we train instructors from all over the world I do love this. this part of my job 
Yeah. It's amazing that yeah. Citizens Bank continues to do this. Why is it so important to stay involved with the community? Yeah, the fabric of the community. The strength of the communities is absolutely tied to our own strength. We know that. So it's not pure philanthropy, but obviously organizations like this that are efficient and effective and do so much to, to uh, strengthen the community, it's, it's, it's our job to, to be there and to help them out and to recognize their, uh, their good work. All right. Ned, thanks so much for joining thanks, us. Thanks, Jocelyn. Always good to be with you. And don't forget your partnership. You're part of this too, 10 years worth. Thank you for that. We are very honored to be part yep. of it. All right, we want to congratulate High Hopes as well. Like many nonprofits, High Hopes Therapeutic Writing relies on volunteers. For more information, log on to highhopestr.org. And if you want to learn more about the Champions in Action program, just go to citizensbank.com.